how to build a container image using Finch and Jenkins. When you first start out building container images, more than likely you just use Docker build. But did you know that there are numerous other tools that allow us to build container images? One of those tools is Finch. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.440.1. Attached to this controller, I have a Mac OS based agent that has Finch installed on it. I also have a Docker Hub account that we're gonna be taking a look at and also a sample repository. The link to that sample repository is down in the description. Now, before we take a look at the sample repository, let's take a look at the documentation for Finch. You can find that at runfinch.com. What we can see here is Finch is an open source tool for local container development. And in fact, if we go ahead and take a look at getting started and installing Finch, notice at this point, it's available for both Mac OS and for Windows. Now, since we're on Mac OS, let's go and click into that and let's see how we can install it. Now, for my scenario, I used Homebrew to do the installation. So I did a brew install Finch, and then I checked it with Finch dash dash version. And in fact, that's gonna be the first job that we take a look at. So let's go ahead and go over and take a look at our sample repository. What we can see here is we have a repository with three folders, verify, basic, and multi-arch. If we go into verify, let's take a look at the Jenkins file. What I have are three stages. For the first stage, we're gonna do an echo of path and then finch dash dash version, just like we saw over in the documentation. Next up, we're gonna run finch vm status and then finally run finch system info. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller We'll go into the 00 verify job, and then let's go ahead and click on build now. Now, if we take a look at the job, we can see that it failed. So let's take a look at the output from the first stage. We see our echo of our path, and then we'd run Finch version. But we notice here that Finch is not found. Well, when Finch was installed using Homebrew, it put Finch into a place on the machine that the path doesn't see. So we can see here our current path as Jenkins sees it, is user bin, bin, user s bin, and s bin. If we go over to our machine and let's take a look at which finch, and we can see that finch is inside user local bin. So we need to add that path to our agent. So how can we do that? Well, let's go ahead and go into our agent, click on configure, let's scroll down to the bottom and select environment variables. Now what we want to do is first take a look at the help. And what we can see in the help is Jenkins has this concept of a special syntax base plus extra, which allows us to add multiple key value pairs. And in fact, they even show the example that we actually are going to use. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding our value of user local bin to path. So let's go ahead and copy this. We'll go ahead and click on add for the name. We're gonna do path plus local bin. And then in the value, let's go ahead and put in user local bin because this is the path on our machine where Finch actually lives. So let's go ahead and click on save. Now let's go ahead and go back over to our job and let's see what happens when we run the job this time. When we take a look at the output for this job run, what we can see is our path is now inside of our path variable. We can see Finch is at version 1.1.2. We run Finch VM status. We can see it's stopped. But what we can see here is when we run Finch system info that Finch is stopped. We must run Finch VM start in order to start the instance. So what we have to have is we have to have the Finch VM running under the hood. When we first set up Finch on our machine, if we go back and take a look at the documentation, what we can see here, going all the way back to the top, the first step that we had to do was run Finch VM init. Once you do the init, it creates a VM and it's running on that machine. Now for my example, I had already stopped this VM. So let's go ahead and go back into the machine and restart the VM. So we'll go ahead and say finch vm start. Now that the vm started back up, let's go back over and run the test job one more time. Go back into verify and let's click on build now. What we can see here now is that the output of finch is 112. We can see the vm status is running. And then when we run finch system info, we see information for both the client and for the server and the job completes successfully. So that was a very simple example of how to interact with finch. Now in my job, I could have included the Finch VM start, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make sure that it's actually running on the machine manually. And then in the job, I'm just going to check to see if it's running or not. So now let's go take a look at our second job. We'll go back over to the repository and under 01 basic, let's go and take a look at Jenkins file. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating an image and pushing that image up to Docker Hub. 
Now, prior to the start of the recording of this video, I had created a credential on Docker Hub in order to interact and do a read, write, delete type personal access token. I've taken that token and put it into my Jenkins controller as a username password type credential. So what we can see here at line four, DH creds, that's my Docker Hub credentials. I'm using the credentials helper to pull it in and inside of my credentials store, that credential is named Docker Hub RWD PAT. I'm also defining a registry server variable. In this case, it's registry onedockerio In order for Finch to work with a container registry, we have to specify what the registry server is that we're gonna be logging into and interacting with. Now, as we move into the job, what you can see is the first three stages are very similar to what we had over in Verify. We're doing Finch version, Finch VM status, and Finch system info. If Finch system info fails, then the job's just going to fail because Finch is not up and running. But if we can get past that stage, then we know that Finch is okay, and then we can continue on doing whatever it is that we need to do with Finch. The next stage is we're going to go ahead and clean up all the images that are setting on this machine. So we're getting rid of Finch Basic and also the fully tagged Finch Basic image, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Next up, we're going to do our build. So we're going to say Finch build, and we're going to tag it with Finch Basic latest. Notice how we specify the dot. Finch build looks for the file named Docker file. If for some reason Docker file is not there, it will also look for container file. If you don't have a file named either Docker file or container file, you'll have to use a dash F to specify what file it is that you're wanting to build. Next up, we'll go ahead and list out the images after we do the build. Then in our case, we're just gonna run the container real quick. Let's assume that we had some tests in there. In my case, it's just going to output hello world. Next up, we're going to go ahead and tag the image to get it ready to push up to Docker Hub. So we're saying Finch tag, we're gonna give it the image name that we created with the build step and then give it the fully qualified name that we need to give it for Docker Hub. And what we can see here is we're including the registry server slash dhcred underscore USR. Now the underscore USR is extracted from the dhcreds environment variable. And then we're going to name it Finch Basic Latest. Just for clarity, we're gonna go ahead and run Finch image list again. Next up, we'll go ahead and log in to Docker Hub. So we're saying Finch login dash u dhcreds underscore USR. Again, the USR is gonna be the user part of the credential that we can use to log into Docker Hub. And then we're gonna pass in the password. So we're seeing that at dhcreds underscore PSW. Again, much like the underscore USR, the underscore PSW is just the password part of a user name credential type. Once we log in, we'll go ahead and push the Finch Basic latest image up to Docker Hub. And then finally, once everything is completed, whether it's successful or failed, we're gonna go ahead and log out of our registry server, which in this case is Docker Hub. We're gonna go ahead and remove all the images and then finally do a listing to make sure all the images are actually gone. So let's go ahead and go over to our controller and let's run the job for 01 basic. Now, while that job is running, let's take a look at Docker Hub. Within Docker Hub at this moment, there is not a repository for finch-basic. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and go back over to our controller and let's look at the log as it's running. Let's go back up top. We see our finch version, our status, our system info. So we know finch is up and running, no problems. We we'll go ahead and do a cleanup of all the images that are existing already inside of Finch. At this point, there are no images there. We do a Finch image list. We can see that there's no images running there. We do our build. We go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. We do our image list. We can see our Finch basic latest. We see the output from our Finch run is hello world. We do our tag, which gives it the fully qualified path that's necessary in order to push the image up to Docker Hub. What we can see here from Finch image list is we see both Finch basic and the fully qualified path for Finch basic. We do our login and then we do our push of the image. And then finally, after the push is completed, we do our logout and remove all the images. So at the very end, when we do our Finch image list, we can see there's no images left behind. Now let's go over to Docker Hub and see what happened. So taking a look at Docker Hub, if we refresh this page, what we see now is there is a Darren Pope Finch basic image that's there. So if we go into that, we take a look at tags. What we'll see is our Linux ARM image because I'm building on a Mac OS silicon-based machine. We can see that the digest is 398. If we go back over to our job, what we can see here is the digest was also 398. So at this point, we were successful in building the image and then pushing it up to Docker Hub. 
Now I've got one more example to show you. Let's go back over to our sample repository and take a look at 02 MultiArc. And just for completeness, let's take a quick look at the Docker file, which is just saying from a base image, we're copying in a hello sh into the image and the entry point. So when we actually do our finch run, that's when we see hello world. In fact, if we take a look at the hello sh, we see hello world. So let's take a look at the Jenkins file. Again, this is almost exactly the same as what we just saw with the basic example. But in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building multiple architectures. There are two places that this change takes place, in the build step and in the push step. So if we go down to our build step, what we're going to see, we see our finch build, tag finch multi-arc latest. Everything looks pretty much the same as what we saw with finch basic, except now we've added an argument for platform. And it's a comma separated list of all the different architectures that we want to build. In my case, I'm building Linux ARM64 and Linux AMD64. So we're going to build two different images. As we come out of that build, once we get into Finch image list, then we should see both of those images listed out. Now, in order to push both of those images up to Docker Hub, we also have to make a change to Finch push. Much like what we did with the build, we need to include the platform argument with the platforms that we want to go ahead and push up. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. Let's go into 02 multi-arc. Now remember, this image is named finch-multi-arc. So if we go ahead and go back over to Docker Hub, take a look at our repositories. At this point, the only finch that we have is finch basic. So let's go into our job and click on build now. Now that the job completed, let's go ahead and go back up top. When we take a look at the build step, we see our platform argument is passed in. When we go ahead and go below the build, when we take a look at finch image list, we see finch multi-arc latest twice, but notice the difference. One is for ARM64 and one is for AMD64. If we go ahead and scroll down to finch image list, after we do the retagging, notice now that we actually have two extra tags. We have the tag for both ARM64 and for AMD64. So the only place we have to specify the platform change is in the build and in the push. So once we get down past our login and into our push, we can see everything is pushed up there. When we scroll down to the bottom, we log out. We can see all the images are cleaned up. No images here. Let's go back over to Docker Hub, refresh this page. And now we've got Finch MultiArc. When we click into that, notice here that we have just a single tag latest. But when we click into the tags tab, what we're going to see is that we have actually two tags listed under latest. We have one for AMD64 and one for ARM64. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.